the title of the book is Singapore Disrupted. But my main thesis is that Singapore is not just being affected by technological disruption, but I, I think maybe what has attracted slightly less attention is how Singapore is actually in the depths of socio-political disruption as well. We use the word disruption or disrupted and it inevitably evokes this sense of anxiety. But we also know that disruption has uh, two sides to it. In as much as it presents risks and dangers, it also presents opportunities. Singapore, for many years, was the original startup upstart nation. We were the disruptor. And how did it come to pass that now we are on the receiving end of what we used to do to the rest of the world? So what has changed? I would say one freeing consensus. For a long time, you know, we, we all grew up in this country. We were all taught to believe in the three M's. Multiracialism, meritocracy, and the third M, I would call it the, the mothering state. The other main thing that has changed is elite fragmentation. In 2011, we had a very interesting phenomenon. There were four candidates for the presidential election, four people fighting for the top uh, political posts in Singapore, and all of them came from within the establishment. So when you have consensus on the key principles that made Singapore a nation frame, and the elite is fragmenting, what do you get? You get what I call the myth of Singapore exceptionalism being punctured. What is happening beneath the surface in Singapore society is something quite um, it's something that to me is very corrosive and uh, very, it's quite dangerous, which is the, the growing sense that there is a gap between the best and the rest. But there's a sense that there are two Singapores and that, you know, um, there is one for them and there is one for the rest of us. To me, the, the most dangerous effect is that this leads people to wonder whether there are two systems in the country. Two systems of education and importantly, whether there are even two systems of justice. You cannot expect the leaders to come in and know all the answers because it's kind of, there are problems beyond their time. But the issue is, how do you have that position power put behind the people who have the heart and the capacity to not only articulate the problem, but also to think about the solutions? Since 2011, it has not been business as usual for Singapore. Things are changing under our feet even as we speak. And my main worry really is the future is here and I fear we are not ready.